Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody, welcome to My Gap Podcast. I'm Doug, and joining me tonight is not Justin because Justin is fucking sick with COVID. Instead, I have the next best thing, which is Noah Reno. Hello, welcome Thank to the podcast, so Doug. Here. Thanks, so buddy. Happy to have so you. nice to have you. So you know what? I'm happy to have me too. We're gonna catch up with you, but before we do that, opening question: If you could be dropped into any fictional universe, which would you choose, and why? Um, I've thought about this a lot. Don't pick mine. So, um, probably like, God, it would just be so easy to pick Dragon Ball Z because (laughs) you've been watching it so much. Because I've been watching it so much lately. But then it's also just cool if you could do beams and you can go Super Saiyan. But at the same time, I have watched that world end eight times, Mm -hmm. and I'm not a Saiyan. I'm a guy. So, like, as easy as it would be to say the Dragon Ball Z world, I think I have to go with uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, the Sonic the okay. Hedgehog world because it would be really fun to be uh, an animal with no with no cares and just okay. uh, run around and maybe have like a specific power that's like very niche. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's cool because you have to consider you're like, oh yeah, th- th- you know. I want to be a Jedi. It's like what we're saying is like you are just kind of dropped in. You're not yeah. necessarily the hero. You exist in that universe. Like, you know, I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. I, I think if I think if I were to be put into into Mobius, which is the name of the Sonic world, mm-hmm. uh, I think you'd have there'd have to be some sort of filter to at least turn you into an animal of some kind. Sure. To to like yeah. blend in with the nat with like the natural species. So you're not talking like this the Sonic the Hedgehog cinematic universe. You're talking about no, the video game no, no just <laughs> I, the anime, the comics, like uh, that kind of thing. Where okay. definitely like I don't know. I, and even if I'm not, I, I could at least tend to like a Chow Garden and mm-hmm. just and like race babies for a living. Yeah. I think that would be tight. Also. <laughs> Well, that's a fun quote out of context. If I could just race babies for a living, that would be great. Sometimes That'd they be, fight. Sometimes they don't. You know, <laughs> that would be that would be cool. I like all those are, are solid. The one I I was really sort of fixated on was uh, uh, Avatar: Last Airbender. Like, yeah, so that world would be cool. And even if I wasn't a bender, just to see like all the cool things that people can do with the elements, especially like in the earth kingdom and be like, sure. you know, watching people just like, we're going to build something and they just build shit up. You're like, Oh wow, that's cool. And then, you know, you've got all these like chimera like animals that exist in the world too, you know? And you're like, Oh yeah, that's my, it's my dog cat. And that's my, you know, a lizard chicken or whatever. I, I don't remember all of them or what they do. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's um, a, that's a great pick. I think that would be a, a good third choice yeah for me because i think even for an average person it's not great right especially if there's like the evil you know dictators stuff, and stuff around stuff going on but you can still we've seen that even non-benders can be effective in that world yeah if you are talented enough and even you know, in like even in the modern age i mean you still got like mm-hmm. you got running water you got electricity like Mm-hmm. Some some of those essentials still locked in, like not going to be that much different. But then you get all the other stuff on top of it. Yeah, you do have to deal with spirits, which can be kind of chaotic. Cool. You know, you c- and that could be that could be a career path if you're a non bender mm-hmm. is is just be like right. spirit wrangler. Right. Yeah. Like it's and that can be good or bad again depending on what area you're in. You know, and you're just like, oh, this spirit got mad and it just captured all of our townsfolk. And uh, uh, we don't know what to do about it. We hope to God someone comes by and, uh, oh, good, the Avatar is here. Can you please fix this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd have to figure out how to be a, like a sage of some kind to get like holy water. Yeah. I would love to see that because I think it'd be cool just to uh, see the elements in different, even like, you know, the the the, the water tribes 
what they're able to do with things and whatnot. And just, I don't know. I think it'd be really creative just to see people like, yeah, we're in a boat and we're going to, we're going to bend the water around us so we can go faster and yeah. take us where we need to go. It's like 4th of July, but we're here, we're on the boats and we're on a pontoon and we're just going to be like, woo, yeah. you know, I'd want to go to like a Disney, like a Disneyland. Adjacent. Oh my God. That in, in the bending, in the avatar world, that's like, four non-benders you know but it's like yeah pay your 25 five dollar ticket and you got mm-hmm. a bunch of like rides and sh- and like fire shows and uh maybe they have like air tunnels like blow you up and like let you kind of float there for a little bit yeah. uh, i think that'd be great i think it'd be good for business and i think that i know that's another career path that you as yeah, a non-bender right. could have because you know anybody can do business you don't got to have magic to do business right you just have to employ. You have to have business smarts. Yeah. You know, you got to inherit you, you some land. That. Yep, and you got to put in the time. And you got to make sure everyone signs a waiver before they come in. True. So that limited you are liability, not legally limited liability on all that sort of stuff. I think the only people I'd be scared of would be like the firebenders. It'd be like anyone I know that owns a gun. I'd be like, I don't know, man. <laughs> you got to chill I don't know about man. this. You got to chill. Like, yeah, it'd be crazy for someone to you know shoot ice at you or like you know affect the earth. But I just feel like anyone that has fire, yeah, just be like, I light your fucking. I mean, it's, fire, yeah, it's buddy. it's all lethal, but it it is different. Yeah. It is the difference between like a knife and a gun. Like, it's it's just, very it's, much so. Yeah, just no. That it's like, hey, the comet's here, and now. Or the moon's out, so now the water people are like, I'm invincible, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, stuff like that would be would be pretty wild. But I'd be I'd be really cautious of the the firebenders and and stuff. But also in the modern age, you get so you get the cool sports too. Yeah, for sure. You know, th- th- there's cool stuff like that. There's just so much I, in that world that is just interesting, and that you can exist as a normal person. I could definitely I see be. myself being a fan of of the pro bending league. Yeah, that would be really cool. Get your I shirts, get your calendars it. with all mm-hmm. the different players and teams. That'd be big. Yeah. Now, real quick. Let's flip this on on this head. Like, what's the universe you would not want to get dropped into? I, I think it would be, I think it would be bad to be in like the Lord of the Rings universe. Um, oh, I would suck. Average very guy dirty, in Middle very Earth. Sad. <laughs> and basically anything like that. I mean, like Game of Thrones too. Just like Ugh. I think I think most fantasy worlds, if you're not yeah. the protagonist, would not be fun to live in. Oh yeah, it'd be uh, Game of Thrones would be just awful. Because even if you even if you're rich, Game of Thrones goes into that. Like even if you're rich, if you're not the main character, then any, at any time someone can just come in and cut your head off. That's not fun. Oh, Game of Thrones, would, Game of Thrones would be terrible just because there's this constant politicking going on, and it's like you're swearing oaths, and then it's like some shit happens. You're like, oh shit, do we break our oath? Or do we stick with the plan, even though the oath we've sworn is not good for yeah. the greater good? And it's just constantly. And if I anything, I've learned anything from watching House of Dragon. It's just like the inner, the higher level sort of politicking that goes on is just exhausting. Where it's like, all right, you're gonna marry my daughter, so that'll bring our houses closer together, and hopefully we'll stave <laughs> off any potential problems. But that's also gonna piss off these other people yeah. as well because I chose you. And then it's like, you know what? You know what? Take that back. You are going to marry your sister. And that that way, yeah, that'll just take actually, care of that. Actually, hold on. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Want to <laughs> hold on a second. I take it back. Uh, um, you know. <laughs> the, the, the alternate answer would be Gotham specifically. There's oh, no there's God. no world where I would. If I, oh. if I got plopped in Gotham by some third party magical entity, I would just I'd be done. Oh, what's the point? living in that city man it's like that city sucks no, just leave <laughs> yeah just go, some, go go to metropolis go to anywhere else because gotham is a shithole man there's no good coming from living there even if you're like i'm gonna be a criminal it's like well you got to potentially deal with batman and other criminal yeah, I'm entities not try- and i am like- not trying to deal with batman i think that's the interesting thing about having if, if i were dropped there i would have all the knowledge mm-hmm. that i have now of the yeah. of what i know about batman Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I'd rather not. I'd rather not have to deal with that. I just like moved to Cincinnati or something. There you go. Yeah, because those towns do exist in yeah. the DC universe. So it's like, yeah, I'm just I'm gonna go to Nashville. Go someplace you know? like, else. <laughs> <laughs> I think another one would be the Marvel universe, yeah. just because there is in the comics. Dear God, you would not want to be an average just person. Any, We've covered any this. universe that has ended multiple times within the last fifty years of the property's runtime is like, no, thank you. I, I'm good. I would rather not. 
because there's no guarantee that when the universe resets that I'm going to be the one that gets reincarnated as me on the other side. It could be even mm-hmm. though Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman are all there, I, mm-hmm. I might not be. I'm not like important. I'm not like a structural in, integral part of the universe like they are. So like, yeah. I don't know. Who knows if I'm going to if I'm going to plop up next time the universe gets reset. No, thank you. Well, there's so many world ending events that are taking place on top of all the other not quite world ending events, but also cataclysmic stuff that's happening just to be an average person would be a fucking nightmare. You know, I mean, you've seen it and you know, it's like, Oh, there's the battle of New York. It's like, Oh shit, I'm in New York and aliens are attacking. And also the Hulk just ran through my, my (laughs) living room, you know, like it's just, there's just too much shit going on. That's like, you know, that's just, it's, it would be exhausting. And I feel like the economy would tank because there's no way to repair all the damage that's constantly happening and whatever people just be living in fear. Yeah. Like it would just be an absolute nightmare. I'd be like hard pass. Don't want to be part of that hard pass, but these are good answers and we'd love to hear your answers. So hit us up at youtube.com slash mind gap podcast, drop a comment. Let us know what's a fictional universe you'd want to be dropped into and what's one you wouldn't and tell us why we'd love to hear from it. Uh, while you're at youtube.com slash mind gap podcast, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, be a pal. It's free. It costs you nothing and it supports us. It does a lot for us. And also check the link in the description to links to our discord, to links to our Patreon, links to our merch, all that good jazz and uh, share us around, you know, just uh, give it to someone who's like, Hey, these guys say fun stuff. And I'd love to hear what you think about this. That would mean a lot to us. So of course, wherever you're listening to this, you know, like, rate, review, all that good stuff. We appreciate you. Appreciate you spreading the good word, spreading them so we can get them. You know, that's what they say. Spread them so I can get them. You know, that's 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 what my dad taught me. You know, Game of Thrones. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, salacious. Oh, salacious. You know, there's another uh, <laughs> there's another audio drop I should get because everyone has it. And it's the Hawk Tua Girl. If you're not familiar with the Hawk Tua Girl, I mean, if you've been on any social media or the internet, you've probably heard of her. Um, and she basically was doing an on-the-street interview. Her real name is Haley Welch. Oh, but they were saying like... Like grapes. Like grapes. She's Oh, she's the heiress to the grapes. The Concord Grape I'm Empire. I'm understanding now. I get where all this came from. <laughs> I get it. But essentially, they were like, what's something you can do to drive a man crazy? And she's like, you got to do the old hot tour and spit on that thing. For whatever reason, that just fucking blew up. The internet loves you know? it. Internet absolutely loved it. And I got to say, there were some really hilarious memes that came out of that. Um, I love how things get repurposed to like all corners of things to, you know, D&D <laughs> and everything. How like these things get put in there. I think one of my favorite memes was it was uh, old. It was like Mortal Kombat 2. And someone was playing as reptile, and when they get to the fatality, <laughs> reptile spits on people, and instead, a, a quick they superimpose her face, and she goes "hak tua," and like the acid comes out and melts the guy. It's like fatality. I'm like that's pretty good. That is pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. There was also a just, a D and D meme where it was like you know a paladin asking a bard what to do you know with a lady, and he goes, "You got to give her the old hak tua, spit on that thing," you know. So that's always fun. And yeah. that's true. What about you? That is too. What, that is are you, true. what are you going to do? Lubrication first, is important. The first that I was exposed to it was, it was literally just like, it was a little TikTok, and it was this little like unicorn squirt gun. And <laughs> when you pull the trigger on the squirt gun, the mouth opens and it squirts water out. And it was literally just like the dude kind of fingering it, like making it talk uh-huh. alongside her. And then when she says, ha, tuh, it spits water out and that's it. Like that's that, that's where I, and I was locked in. I'm like, all right, this is good. I think this is funny. Uh, or it was, it was funny out of context, just having that appear in front of me. Uh, mm-hmm. it has certainly gotten overplayed at this point. Yeah. I've seen a lot of it on TikTok and Twitter. Mm-hmm. But you yeah. know, that's, that's the cycle of that's the, that's the meme life. You know, you, it's so you weird how stuff like this just takes off, you, get you know, big. like how the zeitgeist goes, this is the thing. This is the thing that I want. I, we, this is hilarious. Like this is, cause it seems pretty innocuous, right? Yeah. This, 
I mean, how, how many I mean, of those of those dumb interviews are there where people just go up to somebody and are like, say one thing or for a hundred dollars, do this or like or for a dollar, do this. And like, how many of those are there? And then this is the one that that blew up. Yeah, it's 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 wild just to be like, because I'll say this much like Haley, like definitely delivers in a very comedic way. It's very like. She's having a good time, just like letting it fly. And I'm like, I find it very uh, lovely the way that she's just like, you got to give it the old hawk to yeah. spit on that thing. I'm like, you know what? I would I like you at, at you're, first. You're fun. You, you think so. The context of it a little bit, too, is that this is this took place in Nashville, just like on the strip. And she was just like drunk. And of course, it's just like a dude goes up to a drunk girl and is like, say something stupid so I can mm-hmm. put it on TikTok and exploit you. But she won. Mm-hmm. She came out of this yeah. on top and she didn't she wasn't like, oh, my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. She's like, yeah, I'm the hawk to girl. Let's like <laughs> let's run it back. She's like selling merch and stuff like. Yeah, I love it. I love that stuff because you always wonder, like, you know, when stuff like this goes viral, like what is the method for which people are able to, quote unquote, cash it in? Um, because, you know, she didn't ha- she didn't own that video. So whatever. That original video was like she she obviously didn't get any sort of you know payout no from ad that or rev. whatever and no ad rev or anything like that so you know that there's definitely a, a limit to that I, I think I saw an interview with her where she had like already been off social media for like six months prior to this so she honest, she had no idea yeah. what was going on and then people were like hey it's you <laughs> you're the hot to it girl she's like what <laughs> and I think she had a friend who uh, um. Was like, hey, you know what? Uh, let's let's get some merch together for yeah. you. And according to this article on Uproxx, uh, she sold at least sixty five thousand dollars in hats within the first two weeks, and uh, she raked in thirty thousand dollars for three appearances in New York City. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw. I I know I saw her. She she like came out on stage at some dude's performance. I can't remember who it was. It might have been like Luke Bryan or something. Where she was just, was. she was just there. <laughs> it's like okay, for sure. I mean, if if you can capitalize on something like this, you have to. I and and honestly, being off social media, I think, you know, it's good. Like not being mm-hmm. on social media is good. But now she's got this little bit of fame, and she's been pulled back into it. And uh, you know, who knows? You know, in in two weeks' time, now we're not gonna be thinking about her anymore it's gonna be over yeah. but she got her back i mean you just said she she's made a hundred thousand dollars in the last two weeks and has that we had, know of that we know of and she has multiple appearances she's touring or whatever i mean it's like you just gotta you gotta take advantage of this kind of stuff it's like a once in a million thing where you can just get your bag and then be forgotten i mean there's so yeah, there's so many memes out there that are like you know yeah. bad luck brian or like just whatever, like any of these old school memes that were just like, they just got popular, but nobody made any money from them. So like if you can, mm-hmm. if you can, you know, it's not even really that degrading. She was just drunk and said something stupid, whatever. And now she's making a yeah. bunch of money from it. Awesome. <laughs> because one dude tried to exploit her and then she got the W. The meme's yeah. annoying. I, I, I do think that <laughs> it's annoying, but I can't, I can't be mad about somebody getting their bag. No, like I think... Yeah, like I, I, like I said, I think it's difficult to. It's too often that stuff because you know what also happens is, you know, whoever posted that and started going viral, then people started ripping off that yeah. video, you know, and ripping off like that's how it goes. People just rip off stuff, or they call themselves aggregators, <laughs> and they'll just uh, rip that stuff off and go. Now it also is being reported that supposedly there's a reality TV show that's based around her life that is, is taking place, which I listen. I'm happy for her, but I'm like, I got to know what person's like, hey, this girl said hot to us, spit on the thing. There's a show here. You know, like, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make a show. I'm glad it's reality TV because when I first heard this report, it's like, there's a TV show. I'm like, based on what? Are we talking like a sitcom? Like, what are we, what are we doing? Like, <laughs> Let's get the hog to I, a sitcom. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. You know, like, it's wild. I, yeah, that's interesting too. I don't know where. You could go with something like this, especially because it's like I don't, I don't think a reality show of my life would be anything. So like, <laughs> mine would be so boring. Yeah. So like, I don't know. 
saying something funny when you're inebriated does not constitute you being like an entertainer. But I mean, there there are certainly worse people who have made more money doing stupider things. Mm-hmm. So like, again, it, it's just one of those things where sure, get your bag, but like it also becomes a who's green lighting this? Why, why are we giving this that much attention? And why do you think that this would be a good idea? Because it certainly isn't. And you might get some people who are like curious and want to watch whatever it's going to be, but I don't mm-hmm. think it has legs. And like, and again, it's like, she's just a person. She's not an actor. Mm-hmm. She's not an entertainer. As far as I know, like she, she's definitely brought up her appearance or whatever as far as she's grown. Like she's, she's been super adaptable to the situation is what I, I guess yeah. I'm trying to say, but it doesn't mean that she's like going to be the next Kardashian. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe she will. And maybe she will. I don't know. Beats me. I just I was just doing a quick search of her name and I saw uh, something in here. It was for uh, it's like a flyer for a, a pool party that just happened the day before we record this on July 7th. Um, it says uh, it's Dare Day Club. Haley Welch, a.k.a. Hawk Tua Girl, um, guest judge for Miss Dare Contest. So it's basically like it's a it's a bikini contest. <laughs> Plus special guest Uptown Dale. Oh, <laughs> Uptown Dale, my dude. Yeah, yeah. And it's in it's in it was in Hollywood, Florida. So wow. you know, so there we go. Not the real one. But I just like I don't know. Like I'm happy for her, but when I see like this thing, it's like Haley Welch, aka Hawk to a girl. Uh, I'm just like, oh man, something about this just reeks of industry of, plant. It's just, <laughs> it's a psyop. It, it, I don't know, man. It just, it feels like someone is just, you know, again, like you said, she's just making the most of the moment and that's totally cool. Go and do that. Yeah. Part of me, my soul like dies <laughs> when I read this. And again, it's nothing against her. It's just, there's a sadness to it and I can't quite. May, to me, may, maybe I can equate it to like the sadness of like Las Vegas, right? You show yeah. up to Las Vegas, bright lights, all this really cool stuff, and then as you look a little closer, you're like, "This is fucking sad, man. This is a sad." Place I think to that's be. just because this is just this is just what it is. I, I have seen the industry plant theory going around, I, and I don't think that it is. But Wait, so what's the industry plant theory? That this is all just planned, and that she's <laughs> oh. that she is an industry plant who's just like, yeah. We're going to get a bunch of social media money and buzz or whatever. And it's like, it's all for this TV show. It's all for whatever. I don't think it's that. I, I really don't think it's that. I think that this is that just a complete. is a bold prediction, if that's the but, case, to be able to be like, you're going to go out. We're going to do this man in the street. And we're going to say, hock to it. Just spit on that thing. And we've done the math. That's going to generate <laughs> so much interest. That it's then going to lead to all this other stuff. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a, to say it's a stretch is an understatement. <laughs> but I do, I do think that there is something to like, the people in charge don't know how to read the algorithm. They don't understand mm-hmm. the algorithm. And because this right. is this is 100 percent the algorithm doing what it is supposed to do, where she this this video got posted, people started sharing it around, and then because it started to get sharing around, it got shared around more. And that's mm-hmm. just like that is the algorithm working, but the people who are pitching TV shows about it don't get that the algorithm can push something away just as quickly as it pushes something to the forefront. Mm-hmm. So like again it's it's just all about the timing of things and how you can capitalize on it because I think she's doing the right thing and that yes. this is going to go away so do every mm-hmm. single thing that you can do now versus trying to greenlight a TV show and potentially have like multiple seasons of that and like multiple years and stretch it out cuz that's not going to happen. If you're if you're like an industry dude and you want to capitalize on the Hawk to a girl thing, get her on Master Chef, like have her come in and guest star <laughs> with Gordon Ramsay or like Bobby Flay or something. Like, don't, yeah. don't try to like give her her own thing again. Not that she doesn't like deserve it. Like, get your thing, but it just like doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's. I think it's a big, it's a big pull to be like, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm like, because I'm thinking about it too. Like, can you imagine like in four weeks? just making like at least a hundred grand yeah. just from something that you said on a video and people are making memes about it. And it's like, what the fuck? Now the other dark side of that too is all the creepos. They're like, what's her name? What's her name? 
Where are you, Haley? Haley? Like, you know, yeah. It's a Guy gross. shows up outside of Welch's you know. factory. He's like, I, you, I got something you can spit on. <laughs> Is it working? <laughs> Hock you on me. Um, <laughs> on, on my thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. It's like part of me goes, reality TV show can get spun up pretty quick. So I appreciate people being like, if we're going to do this, we got to do it now. Like there is definitely an expiration date on this. So like we got to go. But if this is like one year from today, we're going to have the Hawk to a girl reality show. I'm like, ah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. If people are going to be like, I think at that point, it's like, huh? In, in five okay. years, Lindsay Lohan is going to be Haley in the biopic. There you go. You know? <laughs> and and a, a, a part of me feels like. Again, this stuff, like, and this is nothing against Haley. Like, this whole situation is just gross. Like, the people that have come out of the woodwork to be like, let's capitalize on this. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know, man. Can we just enjoy the meme? Like, for, for sure. her, like, grab your shit and get out and do whatever you're going to do. But for people to come and be like, we're going to make a TV show out yeah. of this. It's like, boy, and again, is totally. This just really to like, we're going? just to like reiterate, if somebody offers me a TV show, I'm going to take it. I'm going to do it no matter mm-hmm. what. So, like, yeah. She she cannot do anything wrong in this situation. Even if she said, yeah. "All right, I'm done. I'll just let it ride." She's already mm-hmm. made her money. So she's like, won. she can continue to she she cannot do anything wrong in this situation in my mind. Like she's she's got it. And but mm-hmm. I think it is it started with her being exploited by a dude mm-hmm. for content and now it has potentially turned into <laughs> corporate fucking hollywood mm-hmm. trying to exploit her for more money it's like she might get more money out of it but it still does feel gross yeah it feels gross and i wish her the best i wish Haley the best couldn't 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 say that even more i'm like good for you capitalize on this do what you got to do it's just one of those things where i'm like in my mind it takes one thing one little thing for people to be like man fuck this girl you know what i mean like you know <laughs> If all of a sudden her politics come out, right? Or she says something like that, it's going to be like, someone's going to be like, so are you voting for Trump or Biden? And then like, before you know it, it's like, <laughs> she just gets crucified and uh, she just gets lit up and all that sort of stuff. So, I mean, I hope, I hope she gets as much out of this as she can for because sure. I don't think many people do. My favorite episode of South Park involved a bunch of old meme guys like, you know, the guy who did Chocolate Rain and the... Uh, numa numa guy and everything like that and they were all in a room and they're all arguing over who had the more theoretical dollar value assigned to them they're like i'm worth way more theoretical <laughs> dollars than you and it's one of those things where like everyone knew who these people were but they got nothing from the things that you know went explosive at the time and i think people are still struggling with that now it's a little bit better because of things like ad revenue and things that can be be tacked onto these sorts of videos and social media elements. Um, but it's, it's still like one of those things where, I don't know, how would you feel? Cause let me, let me, let me ask this. How would you feel going viral over something like that? If someone's like, Hey man, what's the way to drive a girl crazy? And you're just like, man, you just got a hawk too. You just got to spit on that thing just blah, 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 or whatever. And they're like, everyone's like, I love this guy. And like that moment is spread everywhere. You got your parents being like, Noah, what is this? I never knew. Like, how, how do you show me? How do you do that? How do you do that? That would be awesome. Like, what do you? What like? What exactly do you do to drive her crazy? You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I would if if this sort of thing would happen to me, I would do exactly what she's doing. I would definitely mm-hmm. like put out a shirt. I would yes. I would make a short film about it on my own like time. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely do some follow up. But once I get to a point where I can get my financial advisor involved and be like, all right, let me put this away. Let me like let me let me get a hundred K two fifty. I'm going to I'm going to put 200 of that away into an IRA or like whatever. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to just like get my debt out of there and I'm going to delete everything. I'm going to go like go completely radio silent because there is no yeah. world where I like want to be. <laughs> The to a guy. I don't want to constantly be that. I'm fine with having my moment of of shine, of fame, and I'll be like, okay, sick. Um, I have I have an audience of one billion right now. All right, go check out my brother's band. I'm gonna go do my own thing. Goodbye. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I will I will literally get my bag. I'll sh- I'll shouts out. I'll like do I'll do my good deed, and then I'm gonna leave because I I definitely don't want to I I 
I at one point wanted fame as as a potential mm-hmm. career path, but I don't really care for that now. I, I'm definitely yeah. of like I kind of like my sleepy life where I just kind of do my own day to day so long as I'm fulfilled. And if I had something that would just be like an instant hack to get me a couple hundred thousand dollars, and then I. And then the incentive is to never use social media again. That's kind of a W <laughs> like in two ways. Dude, that's a huge W. Yeah. That would be wild though. If like people see you, they're like, Hey, aren't you that guy? Like, I and, would, that's kind I, of like I would, and I wouldn't be a dick about it. I wouldn't be like, no, I'd be like, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hey man, I, you know why, I could wh- I could go I to can't conventions follow you or anymore. something. You're like that's by design. You, you know, know like, I, I could easily see myself going to like conventions and then you know still mm-hmm. getting like yeah, I'll do the I'll do a picture for five bucks, yeah, <laughs> whatever. But like yeah, just working be, the system, become an enigma. You know? I think I would rather become like remember that guy. What's he doing now? I would much yeah. rather have that than be like oh yeah the the hawk to a dude. He's like he's like in a gutter. His wife left him. Everything sucks, but he's still just right. like he's still just like doing cameos or whatever. And and he's still <laughs> going around to different bars, being like, "Hey, I'm the Hawk Tour guy who wants to buy me a drink." You know, I definitely don't want that. Yeah, I would struggle with that. I, I've struggled with sometimes, like when we post clips and stuff like that. I'm like, boy, if this is the one that goes, boy, I'll be really. <laughs> I had fun in this moment. People were like, hey, this guy's talking about farts. I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's who I am, it's I on guess. Brand. You know, it's on brand. You know, I don't know if it were too much. I, I talked to um, someone over the holiday weekend recently. They're like, oh, man, I would hate that if that was my daughter. You know, it's like she's going to be, you know, that's going to be her legacy is talking about spitting on someone's dick. And I'm like, relax. It slobbing <laughs> on a wanger is not that bad. Yeah. You're just mad that no one slobs on your wang, buddy. You know, all you got to do is ask. Could be worse. Could be way worse. She could could be be known for. (laughs) She could be known for. I don't know. I I don't know. Just someone drink, drink a margarita. I'm just thinking like, what could she, what could be worse that she, that she could be known for? Yeah. Oh, drinking a margarita off somebody's ass. Yeah. I think, I think I would much rather not be known for that. (laughs) Hawk to a. Or drinking margaritas out of the ass. So uh, this is probably the most metal headline of all time I've ever seen. That's great. Uh, a small Georgia town is having a meltdown after a video goes viral of a dude drinking a margarita out of a girl's ass at local Mexican restaurant. <laughs> That's a that I think that uh, I think that is an excellent album too. I think um, yes, butthole margarita by Small Georgia oh, Town. Oh. oh my god, yes, <laughs> that is amazing. So, uh, according to this uh, <laughs> this article from WhiskeyRiff.com. Nice. <laughs> they're in the know. Um, they're, they are in the know. Uh, apparently, there is a, uh, in Waycross, Georgia, uh, there is a, a Mexican restaurant called Rodeo. And apparently, they posted two videos. And the first video uh, shows... <laughs> A young lady bent over in the booth at rodeo with her ass fully out and some dude sticks a funnel in her ass. <laughs> and in the next video, it appears that he's ditched the funnel and instead pours the pitcher of margaritas directly on her ass and he puts his mouth on there to catch it. And uh, what a life. The, this was going around Facebook and people were none too happy <laughs> about how could what you? Were How could you be happy that that rodeo, everyone's favorite local Mexican joint, is is being degraded in such a way by butthole mm-hmm. margaritas? <laughs> my my one of my favorite ones is there's a dude. <laughs> he goes by Iceberg Bank, and he shows him with a picture of a funnel, and he's like, "Finn, I had to wait across and get some of that good old booty liquor." As he's like <laughs> heading over there. Um, and just, I think it's so funny. It's like people get so upset about this. It's like I am, I am far from a prude, <laughs> but I've never been more disgusted in my life by the video of those people acting like animals in your restaurant. Yes, I have seen the video, and I know the name of the server in said video. I have also watched the quality of food and service decline over the years. <laughs> with this incident being the final straw, I will be taking my business elsewhere. That's Pam, by the way. And Pam Thanks, is Pam. valid, honestly. You don't have to be a prude to not like butthole margaritas. I, mean, I, I think that's like, I think it, to each their own, but yeah. not wanting to sit in like a booty margarita covered booth is fair. 
I think that's okay. Hey, listen, um, I'll say this good marketing, I guess. Like if you're, if you're on the mind of any publicity is good publicity, <laughs> then there you go. But considering this is like, you know, I don't know. Where is Waycross, Georgia? I haven't even looked. I'd up. like I'm to go. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, like, just, I, I just want to do, record, I just want to do some research. For the record, I, I do want to check it out if I'm ever, you know, in that area. Um, <laughs> but uh, it is, uh, what's the population? All right, it's, it's 13,000, almost 14,000 people. So it's it's decent size. Less than 20. It's, whew, boy, that is really not near much. Um, <laughs> so what else are you going to do? You get a butthole, yeah, you man. get a margarita. One plus one equals fun. You're going to go over to Blackshear or Hoboken to get, Hoboken. you know. Hoboken. To go For get sure. your stuff, you know, no, or you're, you're gonna, gonna go to drive all the way down to Jacksonville, you know, to get your to get your to get your Mexican food, you know. Um, yeah, so I, I would say, uh, you know, you don't have to be a prude to also not be into butt stuff, you know. That's totally fine. For sure. That's that's. Did you manage totally. to find the video? Uh, I I I'll, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't look for it. Okay, <laughs> I couldn't find it, um, which is tough. I I was just <laughs> curious because I'm I'm like. Okay, do they have food on their table? Do they have like nachos? Do they have quesadillas or something? And are they getting soggy? Because not only now do you have soggy margarita food, but you also have butthole margarita food. And I, and like, it just seems irresponsible. Yeah. Um, listen, it, it's drawing attention, which I suppose is, is good. Um, but also, like, I, I understand sex sells. But um, <laughs> you th- so you think you think that this is an industry plant? You think that they that they were intention they wanted these people here? I mean, I, you think I, butthole, I just, butthole margaritas is part of the marketing, or you think that they're just capitalizing on it the same way that hey? Okay, was? so maybe I'm misunderstanding this because I interpreted this as oh, I think I totally missed. See, I thought this was like a marketing video. Oh like no! Was I think I think that there was just like, people doing butthole margaritas in their restaurant, and somebody I'm filmed just now, it. And now I'm it's just an now issue. understanding that. <laughs> I'm just now understanding that. I thought it was like someone got out a black magic camera, <laughs> they got lighting and everything, and as the guy's like pouring pouring margaritas, it's like slow motion, and the guy's like serving it. It's like come by rodeo <laughs> restaurant for all your margaritas. I was, that's what I was like. This is good marketing because they're trying something. I was like, it's weird. I don't but, think no. Oh. I think I think that this is candid. I think that somebody did this. Ah, uh, gotcha. That so was this my is understanding just, of it. Because I because I just as, as I'm looking for this other it says two unruly patrons at Rodeo's Mexican <laughs> restaurant. I was like, oh, oh, so those people were just doing this they were in just the there restaurant, doing that at the restaurant. Oh, and one of them was a, apparently a server of. Oh, that's wild. That's wild. That's way worse. That is way worse. Well, I don't know what is worse. What is worse? Like, we got a great idea for a video to advertise for our Mexican restaurant and margarita night. We're going to be pouring it over someone's ass. I think, I think that be- Mexican food and buttholes is not a good combination for for like pro plus marketing. I think that you probably want to keep those things separate because there is already uh, a stigma. So yeah. I think that if you're at a Mexican restaurant and you want people to come, you do not do butthole margaritas. Yeah. Um, someone else like wrote in here. It's like everyone that was on the clock should be fired. Listen, <laughs> now that I'm looking at it from a new perspective, I don't know if I disagree with that. Um, <laughs> you manager on duty cannot say they didn't know what was going on and neither can the dining room staff. Yeah. Uh, now, if this was like a like a Hardee's Carl's Jr. style commercial, I could I could yeah. get behind it, but I don't think it was. I re- like I, I'm pretty sure this is just a thing that happened, and it's and it's fucked up and weird. Because that's yeah, again, it's just not my preferred method of drinking margaritas. Yeah, no, I, I I'm laughing because I totally misunderstood. <laughs> the story I, and, yeah. all, and everything about it. I completely was like, oh no, this was a marketing video. That was, that was just two, two randos doing this. And someone's like, can you believe that this is happening? And that's dude, that's fucking Can you wild. believe that this happened at this restaurant? But, dude, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know if, if they could, they could capitalize on it. We could, we could turn rodeo into the butthole margarita place. 
you could you could pay the servers well, and I think that you would get business. I don't I don't think this this business recovers from this. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah, it's, I, I don't, that's tough. I don't think uh, I don't think people are, if you if two randos are in there just like the I funnel mean, imagine, the funnel is one thing the funnel but then is when wild. you but then when you just pour out because it you're not getting all of it so it, it has to be splattering and getting all over the place you're ruining food you're making a mess uh, I think uh, yeah I think do butthole why, murder why did why did they why did he have a funnel. Like I why think, did he I have think they knew. Access? I think they wanted. It was an intention. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they came. They were like rodeos. Play. They're kind of chill. They let people get away with stuff. Let's let's just let's just try the butthole margarita. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just leave it be. Little did they know they were being filmed. How could you? How could you not get filmed for doing that? That's, <laughs> uh, just uh, leave the butthole margaritas at home. Just do it at home. Oh. Preferably in a, so, in a bathtub, but it's not. I, it's not my house. I don't have to clean up your mess. So like. God, dude, can you imagine being <laughs> listen, I've seen some wild shit on the job. When I worked at the hotel, I saw some wild shit. Uh I, I saw homeless people doing wild things in the lobby. I saw uh the most c- colorful looking pimp I've ever seen walk into the hotel in the middle of the day and be like, Hey man, I want to check out your pool. And he had a Bible and everything. And he was like, Bless you. And I'm like, you can't you can't go check. What are you doing? He's like, I just want to see where the pool is. I'm like, you can't be in here, man. Like, this, no. He's hopped in the elevator. He's like, I need to go check out the pool. I'm like, it's closed. No, you can't go up. It was wild, wild stuff. But like, there's definitely that moment where you're kind of like stunned. Like, what do I do? Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm just an average hourly employee here. Like, I'm not a hero. Um, I've had to call the cops. I've had to call the, the ambulance. Um, you know, I've had drunk people try to fight me and all sorts of stuff. And there's those moments where you're like, is this really happening right now? And you're trying to process it. But if someone was like in the hotel lobby and was just like, hey, man, we're going to pour some alcohol into your butthole. I've got a funnel. I'd be like, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we doing here? What are we doing? I'd be like, security, get over here. Like, we've got some butthole funneling happening. I think we would, we would, we would address that on the spot. So for yeah. this kind of place to be like, this is happening and no one is doing anything. Or again, I will give a little bit of benefit of the doubt if you're serving and you're doing stuff. I don't know how busy it was. If this was a Tuesday night versus like a Friday. I mean, I don't know which if this was lunch versus dinner. I don't know. Um, I mean, if you're going to, but I have to, I'm just going to be honest, butthole margarita, not a lunch thing. It couldn't, it couldn't be a lunch thing. This is already a weird story. <laughs> Don't tell me you're going to stop believing at lunchtime. I think there's margaritas. some logic. I, th- I think there has to be. <laughs> there's some logic. I mean, I want to believe it's a nighttime thing. I, I do, don't want to believe it's 1130 that, early lunch. You know, like I do think that there's probably there was probably some some time when somebody was like, what the fuck is going on over there? Did mm-hmm. I do a butthole margaritas over there. Do we like say it, something? Do we tell is that, them, do is that, we tell is that a stop? woman's? Is that a woman's ass? Is that a woman's like, asshole and a funnel? Does that guy have a funnel? Or like, maybe 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 nobody noticed, but then like when he took the funnel out, it went like foom, and then everybody looked, <laughs> be like, uh, "What's going on over there?" And it was already too late, and that's when they started recording. Yeah, I, I, I mean, what do you do as a server or someone? Like, you just come over and be like, hey, I hey, think if, hey, I think whoa, if whoa, I'm whoa. a server, if, if, it, if it is my job being a minimum wage worker at that establishment, I go to everyone else in the restaurant being like, that guy is doing butthole margaritas. Somebody should get the manager. And then I don't do it myself because it's, yeah. I couldn't possibly be bothered. <laughs> right. Yeah, if, if, if I was a server, I'd immediately go, hey, manager, I need some help over here. <laughs> so Someone's got their pants down, and someone's pouring margaritas all over these. You got to get over there, man. Yeah, you got to go over cool. there. Listen, I'll maybe, you know, maybe we can draw straws to see who cleans this up. I know it's my table, but this is outrageous, so maybe we just see what happens. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking to those people because, man, if people yeah. are that daring to do that in public – at a restaurant um they'll probably do it again yeah they'll do it again like that's like if you say hey no they're gonna be like oh yeah like i don't know how oh, that's gonna yeah escalate. butthole margarita because that's the thing is there's no resolution to what happened you know oh i guess it, it, they did respond to the uproar um yes the restaurant we recently responded. became aware 
of uh, the inappropriate incident that took place in our restaurant. We want to make it clear that such behavior is completely unacceptable. We're taking this matter very seriously and conducting a thorough investigation in collaboration with the authorities, the butthole authorities. Any employees found to be involved will face appropriate action. We're committed to the, you know, all that sort of stuff. They posted yeah. this on their Facebook. <laughs> that is. Yeah, why the heck didn't they call me? I'm an authority on buttholes. I know all about them. That is that is wild. Uh, they've been forced to limit comments on their post, and it looks like they're deleting comments as well. Yeah, seems like a legal uh, issue. Yeah. Uh, I didn't invent the video for obvious reasons, but it's out there if you really want to see it. I want to. F- okay, I need to find I'll go this check thing. it out. I, we need to, yeah. I, need to, <laughs> I do. I like. I. I. I hope these people get in trouble. I, need more I really don't care about like what they're doing or how they're doing it. It is more of the. It's. It's just. It's not very courteous to do this kind of thing. <laughs> I think it's really the mess. The mess bothers me a lot. It's like, sure, dude. If you want to, if you want to, like. If you want a butthole margarita, do a butthole margarita. But at least clean up after yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this it's so funny how I going into this whole topic, I was like, this is a marketing video and it's not. It was just two randos. And now I'm still kind of like, wow. OK, <laughs> well, uh, let us know if you'd go to rodeo Mexican restaurant. If you knew that two people had uh, done butthole margaritas, let us know if you you've know? done butthole margaritas. Is it fun? Do you like it? Leave a How comment. How do you handle the cold? Engage. You know, leave a comment. Engage with us. Engage with us. Whew, wow, what a turn for me. I am a silly <laughs> goose. I am a silly goose. Well, speaking of being a silly goose, it's time to test your knowledge of sounds and lines from movies. Noah, we don't even have a name for this game, but it's guess that audio, I guess, from that um, movie, I guess. Name, name, that, mark. name that tune. Name that movie. Name that movie. Tune. Uh, now Noah, you are a uh, you do you were a film student, correct? I was a film student. I've actually dedicated my life to the craft. I even have it uh, embroidered on my skin. Um, <clears throat> doesn't mean I've seen <laughs> too many movies. Um, yes. but uh, you know I've you know I've seen a good number, and and I hope that today I can prove it. Well, here's the thing. I make the point of this is to. Is not the I try if, to it's pull, the what. It's, it's, I try to pull, hopefully, for stars, I hope it's the movies that you've seen. I'm very confident with these that I pull that you, uh, I think, you, I believe you've seen every single one of these that I'm going to do. Uh, it's to pull sometimes maybe an obscure or unusual or what I find to be a memorable sound or quote or something from a film and then just put it out there to be like, do you remember that? Because I find myself drawn to very unique things where I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a weird line. Yeah, the context. Sound. And it's, yeah, like we did like with Jaws. Yeah. Right? I could have done, we need a bigger boat. But instead I did the, you know, how to tie a sheep shack knot on the boat, you know. And I thought that was fun because I always remembered hearing that. But that being said, um, your goal is to listen to these. Uh, some of these are just going to be sound effects. Some of them are actually going to be lines. Okay. But your goal is to then listen and then tell me. What movie it's from? Are you ready? Lock in. All right, here we go. Here's your first one. I have you. I can see it on your face. You know it. (laughs) (laughs) I have you. You. (laughs) What does he have? No, I have no clue. We're going to do it again. Okay, okay. Listen, listen carefully. I have you. Okay, so the so the beep is reminiscent of a sci-fi of some kind. This is this is sci-fi, you're correct. Um, I really like the the foley. <laughs> I really like this, these wrestling sound effects. Uh huh. I I don't know. Is this Alien? It's not Alien. Okay. I haven't seen Alien, so that was my. That was yeah, so you you without a doubt have seen this film. Guaranteed, you've seen it. I know you. Is have. this like a? Huh. I feel like the few movies that I know really well, I like. I have seen enough to be able to quote everything. So if I don't know one's particular line i feel like I, i've either only seen the movie like once or i haven't seen it um so this is less about the line yeah. 
It's more about the sounds that are happening before the line. I left the line in there to help give a little more, like, you know, whatever. But there's something about this sound that I always, it stuck out to me when I saw this film. That I was like, that's a really cool sound effect for what they're portraying here. Oh. The, like, well, I'll the, play it for you again. Okay. <laughs> have you what do you think i don't know are you sure that are you sure that i've seen this guaranteed you've seen this guaranteed is this it can't be this isn't like a star wars it's not it's not and that's like more recent that's like the only sci-fi i know it's 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 a recent film how recent can you give me the year well the first one the first one came out In 2021. Oh. 2021. That's a bit of a blur. Didn't see very mm-hmm. many. Oh, is this Dune? It is Dune. Ah. This is the fight scene. Got it. Or, but it's the, it's the shield and sword yes. scene between Timothy Chalamet's character and Thanos. Yes. Uh, and the, the sound that I reminds me is the, the, the shield, the, the reverberation. Yeah from that film i always find it to be a very interesting sound got it okay let's listen to it one more time not yeah. know what it is i have you yeah yeah okay there's a lot of gasping there is a lot of gasping lot of because gasping. they are they're dueling each other and as they're hitting each other they're hitting the yeah. shield and that's the, the like vibration that. that takes place, which was pretty cool. So good job. You got there with a little little, little bit little, of hint, but hint. you got there. It's all good. All Next right. one, lo- I, I'm locked in. I'm honed. I, without a doubt, you're going to grab this one, I'm sure. So here you go. He's got it. He's got it. Is it alien? <laughs> 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 it's kind of similar to Alien. Alien is more of a. <sighs> <laughs> Although there is a scream from the Alien Queen and Aliens that kind of that is similar to that. So it's not Alien to answer your question. Can I hear it again. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> is this Lord of the Rings? It is Lord of the Rings, but what is it's, it in Lord of the Rings? It's the it's the Witch King. It's the Nazgul. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Nice job. Oh my goodness. All right, all right, here we go. Last one. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. And it's alien. You don't know where I've been, Lou. Oh my god. You don't know where I've been. Um I don't know if I have seen this one. Guaranteed. <laughs> I don't you've know seen if I film. have. Guaranteed. Not alien. Not guaranteed. You've um, seen this film. Who's Lou? Do I know any movies with a Lou? <laughs> it t- it sounds Boy. like it takes place in a gym. Not quite, but you're on the right track. It's just so reverberation. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're absolutely correct. Okay. You want to hear it again? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is like iconic. I feel like this is this is like a well known line. I don't know if this in particular is iconic. It comes from an iconic film. This scene in particular always stood out to me. I feel like I know the like, you don't know where I've been. I know mm-hmm. that, but I don't know what you it's do. from. Yeah. I couldn't tell you. I think. Yeah. If I'm thinking like. Uh, Can you make out who the actor is who's saying you don't know where I've been? Lou? No. You want to hear it one more time? I don't know actors. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try again. Oh, no! oh, my God. Is 
he's being it's so red. He's being it's bullied. So I don't know. <laughs> is this like Breakfast Club? <laughs> I don't know. It's not breakfast Club. <laughs> it's this Breakfast Club. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't seen, I haven't seen it, but so it's not. It's not. It, this movie came out in 1999. Okay, I was I was born that year. Yeah. Um, what movies do I know that have come out in 1999? Uh, Taken. Phantom. God, did that come out? In I, I don't think so. Phantom Menace did. Um, mm-hmm. Other films. Is is this That's animated? It. It's not animated. Okay. It's as real as it so, gets. <laughs> what could it possibly be? Because if I'm, do you want me? Do you want me to give you a hint with the director? Uh, sure. Directed by David Fincher. David Fincher. Do I know him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I know that one. Um, uh, he's done a lot of different films. Uh, he's done The Social Network. Wow, he did. That's right, he did Alien Three. He did uh, Seven, Gone Girl, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the American version. Uh, what else has he done? Zodiac. Okay, so it's none of those. Um, what what would have been a ninety nine like? Rocky. The first Rocky is this a, a Rocky movie? Dude, no. Okay, Rocky well, came out in like I don't know it's late seventies. All right, well. Sorry, I didn't mean to shame. No, you it's okay. I'm like, young. <laughs> yeah, you are young. I always feel old sometimes when I talk to you. I'm like, God damn. You're like, I was born in ninety nine. I'm like, fuck me. Yeah, I was sixteen. <laughs> um, couldn't have been. I feel like there was like a Transformers or something like greatest right, I'll game give ever you, played. I'll give you another hint. Okay. Uh, one of the cast members in this film is Meatloaf. Dude, I don't fucking know. I have no, no, I, I have no idea. <laughs> You're not helping me, man. Fam- like fam- not famously not an actor. So like, I, yeah, I have no, which is why I think it's important. Is this, is this Biodome? <laughs> it's not, it's not Biodome. <laughs> Is down. is Polly Shore the the lead? <laughs> you've seen you've seen Biodome. That makes me. Is very this happy. Masters of Disguise? <laughs> oh my God! Call it out, <laughs> wild. All right, do you want me to give it to you? Yes. All right, this is from Fight Club. Okay, which I know so, you've seen because so yes, you literally did, told me you saw it two weeks ago. Of the sh- at the beginning of the show, I did actually specify that I have seen Fight Club. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So it is fresh in my mm. mind, and I don't remember th- anything from it. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine, because when you're like, oh, yeah, Fight Club, yeah. I'm like, great, he's seen that so one, I have, and I know so that. I have seen it once. Yes. And, uh, and yeah, and as, and as we discussed, it also didn't really leave an impression on me. <laughs> right. Right. So this is the scene when so what, they so are in the Pitt? basement. It was Brad Pitt. Yeah. They're in the basement of Lou's Tavern. And while they're having their session, like the mob boss guy comes down and he's like, what, what are you all doing what down the fuck here? What are you talking about? And Meatloaf you don't remember is in this scene? movie? <laughs> he's the guy with the big tits that he oh. like cries into. <laughs> that didn't register. Robert Paulson. That didn't, that you know? didn't register. His name, His was, name was Robert, Robert Paulson. Paulson. Yeah. So this is the scene where Lou, he comes down there and he's like. He's like, how much are you guys getting paid? And Brad Pitt's like, oh, we don't want to leave. So he lets this guy beat the shit out of him. And yeah. then he kind of gives up. And then Brad Pitt jumps on him and starts like shooting blood all over him. And he's like, you know, <laughs> the guy's like, oh, my God. He's like, you don't know where I've been, Lou. <laughs> it's just like being a total menace. Yeah, to I don't him. I don't so. remember that. <laughs> the only thing I remember from Fight Club really is like the ending. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh. Bad, bad, bad draw on my part, I no, guess. But I was no, like, I know you've no, seen it, it's, but it's you know, not, we tried. I, it is, it is certainly not your fault for my shortcomings. I am a, it's I am good. a, uh, I, I am a piss poor excuse of a film buff. Stop it. You're fine. But that's the You're thing good. too. Is it's, it's always good. been a part of the thing is to like not engage with media for for a long time i was specifically not watching these movies because i didn't want to be inspired Mm. i didn't want to take those ideas i wanted to come up with my Mm -hmm. own stuff uh so even when i would watch movies i'd only sometimes pay attention Mm -hmm. 
Well, good work. I'm this trying to effort. rectify this in in my in my in my coming of age. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to go back and and watch more movies and be better about about engaging in cinema and pursuing the art that I have uh, that I like. I think they're cool. Good. <laughs> I think you're cool. I think you did a good job. I think you did a really good. You told me you're like, hey man, this may not be my forte, but you're a real trooper about it anyway, and I, I'm proud of you. Uh, you got two of them. Third one was uh, was a miss, but you did great, man. You did a good job. Thanks. <laughs> uh noah tell everyone like what's going on man where, where can people follow you what you got going on what's all what's all the good stuff what's the happy haps on holy noah? moly uh, a lot has been going on lately i've started a photography business and that also is going to be incorporating my youtube content creation journey so you can go ahead and follow me subscribe whatever it is leave likes leave comments um at, where can they follow at, you? at noah reno youtube.com slash at noah reno i guess at at no arena i think maybe if that's how youtube does uh those now um but that also leads to my website anrpix.com that is a as in the first letter of the alphabet n as in the la- later one and then r as in a couple more after that uh pix p-i-c-s.com um also you can follow me on twitch where i play video games sometimes at twitch.tv slash gunchpot hell yeah all that stuff. Please go check out Noah. Check out what he can provide to you and how you can make your life a little more special. Thanks. And also check out MindGap on social media at MindGap Podcast and also on YouTube, youtube.com slash MindGap Podcast. And click the link in the description to find links to our Discord, to our Patreon, to our merch at Redbubble. And uh, be sure to leave a like and subscribe while you're there. We appreciate it. And if you're listening in the online realm, please uh hit the review and uh rate and review buttons there and share us around wherever you can um it means a lot to uh get us outside those regular bubbles and share our our good kind world the word of the mind gap with the rest of the world we appreciate that very very much once again noah thank you so much for being here appreciate you buddy it's always good hanging out and chatting with you Uh, thank you doug (laughs) Uh, you're welcome noah and With that, I'll say, uh, listeners, viewers, thank you, and have a dandy fucking day.